The Vehicle Routing Problem, or VRP Solver, is designed to route fleets of vehicles. In this video, you'll see how the VRP Solver can be applied to an appliance delivery scenario, in which a company delivers and sometimes picks up washers, dryers, refrigerators, and so on. You'll see how to model driver's hourly wages, vehicle operating costs, vehicle capacities and appliance dimensions to ensure the appliances for a route fit in the vehicle, vehicle parking, Approaching a delivery location from a specific direction can make parking and unloading easier. U-turns. The vehicles we're routing can't make U-turns very easily. I'll specify where they can and cannot make them. Labor requirements, including breaks and maximum hours worked. Customer availability. The customers need to be present when the appliances are picked up or delivered. Some customers have limited times of availability. The VRP solver will plan the pickups and deliveries so they fall within those time windows. This fictitious scenario takes place in San Francisco. I already created the VRP analysis layer. Here it is in the table of contents and the network analyst window, which is where inputs and outputs are organized into analysis classes, like orders, depots, and routes. The VRP solver has many optional inputs which reflects its versatility and robustness. I'll focus on the relevant inputs for this appliance delivery scenario. Let's drill into the details of how to model the appliance delivery problem. First, I'll open the Layer Properties dialog box to highlight two relevant properties. One is Capacity Count. It's set to 2 to model the two dimensions I've chosen to track, volume and weight. The other property is for U-turns. Vehicles in my fleet can't turn around very easily, so U-turns are allowed only at dead ends. Next, let's examine the 32 orders my delivery trucks need to visit. They are represented by circles on the map, and they appear in the Network Analyst window. I'll open the Orders Attribute table to view the properties of multiple orders at once. The Service Time property is the expected time spent at the order, for example, to deliver and install new appliances. The unit for this field in this problem is hours, so the service times visible here range between 30 and 60 minutes. Time window start 1 and time window end 1 create a time window that governs the service start time at the orders, but not the service end time. You can think of this time window as a way to model the customer's availability, or the time in which the order is available to receive the delivery. Let's look at some examples. This customer doesn't have a time window, which means they're available all day. This customer is available to let the delivery driver in only between 10 a.m. and noon. It's important to realize that since the time window doesn't govern the service end time, the VRP solver allows the service to be completed after the end of the time window. If you want to ensure service is completed by a specific time, simply subtract the service time from the targeted end time and enter that value in time window end 1. Delivery quantities and pickup quantities identify the dimensions of the cargo being delivered to or picked up from an order. Each cell has two numeric values because, as you recall, I set the capacity count of the layer properties to 2 and decided the two dimensions to track would be volume and weight. I also decided to use cubic feet and pounds, respectively, as the units. Keep in mind that the values you enter for dimensions always must be specified in the same sequence for a given vehicle routing problem. I've started to enter them in cubic feet followed by pounds, so I'll need to continue to enter capacity values in that sequence throughout my analysis. The reason for this is that the solver ignores units so that you can use whatever units you need for a given analysis. Customer 18 has ordered a new fridge and freezer that takes up 160 cubic feet and weighs 960 pounds. Since I've entered two numbers for the delivery quantities property and left pickup quantities null, I'm indicating a delivery for this order. Customer 81 is also receiving a delivery of new appliances, as indicated by the non-null values in the delivery quantities property. However, I've also indicated that we're going to pick up their old appliances for recycling by entering dimensional values under pickup quantities. These are the dimensions of the old appliances to put on the truck. Customer 23 was unhappy with the appliances we previously delivered and is returning them. They've decided to buy their appliances from another business instead. 
Because I need to make a pickup at that order without a delivery, I specified dimensions of the unwanted appliances in the pickup quantities property only. I want my delivery trucks to stop on the same side of the street as the order so that employees don't have to take the extra risk and effort of walking across the street carrying appliances. To model this constraint, I've set curb approach to right side of vehicle for most orders. Yet, some orders have parking lots where the trucks can pull into. The approach along the road toward the order can be from either direction. I've set the curb approach property for these orders to either side of the vehicle. There are four routes that operate out of a single depot. Think of a route in the VRP solver as a combination of the vehicle, driver, and itinerary. This will help you understand the route properties. These routes start and end at the appliance warehouse, which is loaded as a depot. The drivers must start their routes at 8 a.m. The start time isn't flexible in this case. Although you could have a mixed fleet with varying vehicle capacities, all vehicles in this fleet are identical and have the same capacities of 1,000 cubic feet and 20,000 pounds. Notice again, these capacity values conform to my standard of volume followed by weight. The solver uses this information along with the delivery quantities and pickup quantities properties of orders to ensure the vehicles aren't overloaded at any time during the route. Drivers make $24 per hour. It costs an average of 80 cents per mile for fuel and maintenance. With max order count set to 20, a route won't serve more than 20 orders. I need to limit the driver's workday to 10 hours, so I've set max total time to 10. Drivers need a break for lunch, so I've created one break for each route in the breaks class. Drivers are allowed one hour off duty as specified by the service time field. This break can start any time between 12 and 1 p.m. Breaks can be paid or unpaid. It's unpaid here. Now I'll solve the analysis to see the results. Network Analyst calculates an origin destination cost matrix between all orders and depots, assigning orders to routes and sequencing the orders. Finally, it computes the route shapes. I can see the sequence of stops a route will make by looking at the subcategories for a route and the numbers in the symbols. Here are the orders Route 2 will visit. Notice that it starts with a sequence of 2, it lacks a 7, and ends with 12. Going to the breaks class, I see that the 7th stop is the lunch break. The Depot Visits class contains the first and last stops, Stop 1 and Stop 13, which are at the Appliance Warehouse. Now I'll verify the solution satisfied the constraints defined before solving. First, I'll check that the truck assigned to Customer 89 has a proper curb approach. I set Customer 89's curb approach to right side of vehicle. Notice that the route passes the order at first because the order would be on the left side of the vehicle at this point, the vehicle continues down the road, turns around where it's able to do so, and finally approaches a stop from the other direction so that the driver doesn't have to carry the appliances across the street. Another important constraint that I want to verify is capacity. First, let me arrange the table so that the route name and sequence columns are also frozen on the left side. Recall customer 23 is returning their appliances because they are unhappy with them. Only a pickup should occur there. Customer 81 above has a pickup and delivery. Both customer 81 and 23 are assigned to Route 2 along with several other orders that only need deliveries. Looking at the depot visits table, I see that Route 2 is loaded with 960 cubic feet of appliances at the beginning of the route, and has 240 cubic feet unloaded at the end of the route because of the returned appliances. 
although 960 and 240 cubic feet would exceed the truck's capacity of 1,000 cubic feet, not all the appliances are on the truck at the same time. The VRP solver has ensured the truck's capacities won't be exceeded at any moment during the route. I also want to check that the customer time windows were honored. Customer 81's time window begins at 1 and ends at 5 p.m. The arrive time is 3.34 p.m., which falls within the time window. Similarly, customer 41's time window was between 8 a.m. and noon. The arrive time is 9.34 a.m., again within the time window. Let's look at how the workload is balanced across the four routes. The total time ranges from about five and a half hours to almost ten hours. One route services only four orders, while the others service double or more that amount. So is this solution correct? Yes, in fact, it is optimal. This solution minimizes operating costs. Still, it's common to want to balance workloads across employees and vehicles, even if the results are less than optimal. So now I'm going to balance the workload by artificially accounting for overtime. Since the average length of the routes in the last solution was 8 hours, I'll enter 8 hours into the overtime start time field. After 8 hours, overtime costs begin to accrue. Employees are paid $24 per hour for regular work time, so I'll double that for the overtime costs by setting cost per unit overtime to 48, then solve. Let's review what I have done while this solves. I sum the total time of the routes in the first solution. This came out to be around 32 hours. I divided the sum by the number of routes, 4, to get 8 hours per route. Then I used overtime to increase the cost for routes that exceed 8 hours. This causes solutions with routes that are longer than 8 hours to cost more, therefore making them less likely to be chosen as the final solution. The result is that route times and orders visited are more balanced.